You're watching the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. I'm Harold. Thanks for watching. Today we continue our subject of painting our background buildings that are going to go on top of the wall in our town of Sherwood. The building you see in front of us has been already primed, so we're going to paint the interior. And the product we're going to use is that product, Mission Models Light Neutral Tan. So we'll charge up the airbrush and get started with the paint. And there we have it. First coat is complete. I believe a second coat will be required. It's normally true when you do airbrushing. So we'll do the second coat and when we're done with that and it's dried, we will proceed to paint, if I can keep this from falling over, the front, which now looks like that. And on the front it's going to be mostly red brick, the brick areas. This area here appears to be stone, so we're going to give it a light gray color. We have completed the priming and the interior painting for our Merchants One building. This time we are going to paint the brick exterior parts. The color of choice is Mission Models Rust. And we'll see how that looks. You can see I've done extensive masking so the only exposed parts are the brick surfaces themselves. Get this to sit up properly. We'll proceed with painting. And we're really hoping to have one coat of paint because I can tell you it took quite a bit of time to put on this masking. So we'll turn on the airbrush and get started. So well, there we go, we have the paint applied. And as I was doing that, I was tempted, of course, to put on more paint so I don't have to do two coats. But of course, the risk in doing that is you get too much paint on there and it washes out and it creates a mess. So we're gonna leave it at this and we will hope that the amount of paint that we put on there will provide single coat coverage. That's this part of our effort to paint, detail, and do the other things necessary for the background buildings in Sherwood. So stay tuned, join us again for our next part, which will either be application of more of this rust colored paint or painting the details. That is to say the things, excuse me, that is to say the things that are covered up here and especially right here, we have some stone detail, which we're going to have to paint. Returning to the next step of our Merchants Row 1 structure, you will see that after we've removed the masking, you can see the results of doing that. The brick has been painted, and the other areas do not have any paint on. So the masking itself was effective, but it had one bad thing, and you can see that here. You see all this primer that has been removed by the masking tape, like here and there. So what we're thinking is the masking tape adhesive was a little too strong. And before we do the next step, which is painting this section so it looks like stone instead of brick, we're going to have to do something to the masking tape. And that will be putting it on a glass surface 
pulling it off, putting it on, pulling it off, putting it on to remove some of the stickiness. After we have done that, we will mask this entire area and we will paint this and you'll see that in the next segment. We have completed the masking and we're hopeful that it doesn't tear off the paint like it did in past time, so we'll see what happens. In the meantime, we have charged our airbrush with Model Master Flat Gull Gray. And it's only going around this area, so it shouldn't take long. Here we go. That appears to be enough. We'll take the masking off and then have a look at what we can see. The masking has been removed and this is the result that we have now. So we have the gray and the red brick. The gray is going to represent our stone. Maybe a little light, but I think it probably looks okay. The masking change that we made to make the tape less sticky was partially successful. You see we've had a little bit of loss of paint on some of the other areas. But the good news is we didn't lose any paint at all on our painted red brick area. So that's what I was concerned about. So they still look okay. Going forward, the remainder of this structure will be painted by hand. And I'm debating on what colors to use or color. Uh, may want to go a little darker, a different color, maybe a gray, a tan, not sure. So we're going to consider that. At the beginning, we said we were going to work on our Merchant's Row 5. That's this structure here. And if you've been following our series, you will remember this was the structure that had the disaster of the outdoor priming. We have removed the paint and applied new primer and have painted the inside. And that's as far as we've gone with this. The next step will be to paint the exterior. We have also taken a similar step with our DPM structures that we have joined together. We have completed the painting of the interior of all the structures. It's painted light tan. And you can see it's pretty even pretty even coverage. That is what the front looks like now, completely unpainted. We have some decisions about which colors we're going to use. In a lot of uh, southern towns, the original buildings were brick and red brick usually. Over the years they have been repainted to various sometimes colorful colors like green and bright red and orange. So we're considering doing some of that, but we don't want to go crazy and make it look, look like Miami Beach. That decision will be made in the future. But here's some additional progress that we've made for now on our DPM structures. Returning to our uh, wall, as we call it, you may recall we put the brick sheeting on here, put these columns in, covered it up with sheet styrene to represent our roadway, the latest change has been to install this structure here, which is the sidewalk. Now the DPM kits didn't come with sidewalks, so we had to fabricate that from sheet styrene. But if I turn it over to the right, you'll see something a little bit different. That's the sidewalk. <laughs> Actually, it's a piece of the sidewalk that came with the Merchant's Row Kit, and there's one corresponding to each Merchant's Row Kit. What we discovered was, because of our space limitation, the sidewalk was too wide, so we had to cut it down. We kind of sliced off half of it in the front, and that will be its placement. What goes in here between the sidewalk and this sidewalk is a two-lane roadway. We have done a few things with our wall since you last saw it that I just pointed out. The one thing we, and this will be interesting about how we're going to do this, normally with a structure like this, you would take it into the sink and wash it off and make sure it's clean and it's got uh, no oils on it. The wall is six feet long. I don't have a sink that's that large. In fact, I probably don't have a bathtub. And besides that, the under part of the wall is actually wood. 
It's a medium density fiberboard. So we wouldn't want to get it wet anyway. So we're going to have to devise a different solution, probably wiping it off with alcohol to make sure that we remove all the residue before we begin the painting process. So look for that in a future video. With the Sherwood Inland Port being such a success, financial prosperity has come to our town of Sherwood, which brings forth the need to have passenger service. So we're going to, now don't expect this in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have Amtrak passenger service coming into Sherwood. In order to do that, of course, we need a passenger station. So the history is the old passenger station is being updated, and that's what we see here. The reality is it's Walther's pellet depot. I'll show you the other side. I'm taking the roof off. Well, that's what the other side looks like. But we won't really be seeing that because the back, of course the other side with the platform, is going to be against the track. And we've had to elevate it above the surface here with this cork, which we'll cut off, in order to get the platform to the level of the track. There will be parking, a parking area, be a roadway here, which also connects down to Martin Manufacturing, and various other things like people and details and steps to go up and that sort of thing. We can look forward to the completion of this in future episodes, including putting the roof on for real, putting some interior detail in here, putting the windows and glass in, and making this look like brick instead of red paint. Just a little something to add to the atmosphere of our small town of Sherwood. And we'll bring some operations variety because we will now have passenger service, which we have not had previously, which should be at least entertaining and it might be complicating because, quite frankly, we don't have a lot of track. We'll look forward to how we solve that problem in future videos. So we thank you for watching this one today. And I hope you'll continue to watch our series of construction and finishing the small town of Sherwood.